Tracy, uh, what you say? What you say? We love you. I love you right back. I love you right back. You feeling good? Yeah. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah. Yes, I love seeing y'all smiling faces in the building. Y'all look so good. You're feeling good. I feel the energy. And I put on my outfit to match my couch today, you see? Yeah. I'm feeling sharp, honey. Yes, I am. I brought my Sunday's best on to Monday. I hope that's okay. Yes. Mm. And I got to stop by home this weekend and get back into Chicago, which was really nice. So I played in my closet is what I'm telling you. And I brought my Sunday's best back with me on today. And then I was, I was with, well, because I normally leave here right after work and fly home to the babies. Now I have my son and seven of his cousins. And I, yep, your, your face said, well, <laughs> yes, I'm crazy enough to have eight boys in the house, okay? And they, they growing up, y'all. My son is 13, and he will be graduating eighth grade this year. I cannot get over it. Like, first of all, no one recognizes him, and hopefully he'll go to high school here in Los Angeles. And he's like, don't show nobody me, mommy. I want them, you know, I want it to be a big old reveal, okay? <laughs> like, he got this whole nother voice. His hair is up here somewhere. And then he's officially taller than me. And yes, it's like, it's like, I'm like, well, hello, I'm your mother. Like, it's a huge transition. He was even practicing shaving the other day. <laughs> it wasn't no hair on his face to shave. <laughs> he gonna get me for this, but it was adorable because two of, two, of, two of the eight is Cam and little David. They're 13, so they get to graduate together. So they, the last time, I, when they was little, they had the little Superman capes on, right? And now we're in the phase where they over there practicing uh, shaving their faces with no hair on it. <laughs> I remember the time when my son was going under my nephew, my great nephew, actually, Yeye's arm. Like, look, he got hair under his arm. And now Yeye is about to graduate high school. So we have four 18-year-olds that are working now, which is insane. And then we have four graduates coming in this year, which blows my mind. So half of them have jobs now, and they're buying me dinner taking me out places, okay? Yes. So we had us, I'm so proud of all my boys. We had us a good old basketball weekend. My son had his last tournament. They did not win, but they did so good. I was out there chin on, and it was his last game. So congratulations to him on that. The next time, the next time he gets to play, he'll be playing as a high school kid, which is a huge accomplishment. I kept telling everyone, like, last year was such a transitional season, so, like, we're now walking into that season. You know, for everybody, I feel like my life was under construction. Their lives are under construction. I told them the little boy phase is over, and to see them step into this manhood is amazing. But I'm just, I'm being a mama right now, and I'm so proud of all of them and all of their accomplishments. We went to the Bulls game, which was a lot of fun. Yes, we did. So they decided to surprise me and treat me with saying congratulations on your season two of the Jennifer Hudson Show, which I was very proud of. And one of them, see, this is when they surprised me right here. I had no idea this was coming. Y'all, that was the best dinner I ever had. You know why? Because they paid for it. I said, what? One of them, this is Marion right here. He's, he's one of the 18 year olds and he just got his first job and he walked through the house. He said, where you wanna go? I'm paying for everything. I'm paying for the whole day. I said, come on, young man, pay for everything. So even when we went to the game, they paid for the desserts. They paid for the food. They picked the restaurant. That's what we do. We invest in our children so they can grow up and they can take over, okay? And you know what else? The boys, they bought me my favorite. They know, they was racing to get it. I love me some Starbucks. So they had to bring me my good old Starbucks. Nothing warms up my winter like some time for myself and my favorite pistachio latte from Starbucks. Oh, baby. I don't see my mug right now. I normally have my good mug with my message on it for today, so I wish I had a little bit of that Starbucks. Anybody got some Starbucks? Up? Can we bring me out some Starbucks? Uh, Yasmin, she works at the Starbucks on the Warner Brothers Light. Y'all give her a hand. Thank you, Yasmin. Yeah. 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 
Now, I can't mess up my white suit, Starbucks, but I sure am thirsty. I got to take my sip. Y'all in my house, you see, this is what I do. I sit in the house, I get my cat, I sit on my couch. I don't be this sharp, though, girl. And I sip on my good old Starbucks. <laughs> yes, I do, okay. Y'all wanna play some games with me? Okay, I hope y'all have stretch before the show because it is time to play Let's Get Physical. Let's Get Physical. Okay, we're going to split you guys up in the middle. Okay, in two teams, one on each side. We got an owl over here and an owl over there. You hear that? Yeah. All right. Now, what's gonna happen? A word is gonna pop up, and I'm gonna have to guess what it is, but don't tell me what it is, and y'all gonna act it out. Can you handle that? Yeah. Okay, and the team, of course, with the most points, what you do? You're gonna win. Yeah. That's common sense. So, team one, what started up, and team one is over here. Can y'all stand up for me? I need to see you good. So, this, this right here, all right, now remember, no shouting out the answers. Let's get 60 seconds on the clock. Here we go. You ready, guys? Yeah. Okay, go. Turning rope, jumping rope. Sexy, jumping rope. Boxing, okay. Uh, kitty cat, yes. I'm doing my eyelashes? Okay. <laughs> Falling? Tripping? Okay. Singing? Yes! Praying? Ballet? Proposing? Ballet? What is that? Yoga? Plucking hairs? Uh, waxing, waxing. Yes, yes, y'all good. Oh, surfing. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. Woo. Y'all was good. <laughs> you got nine points. Team one got nine points. Okay. Woo, that won me out. Team two, y'all ready? Let me see what you got. Good job, team one. Y'all gotta take them out. Yes, that's right. Stretch it out. Get ready, girl. Get into it. 60 seconds on the clock. Don't scream out the answer. Ready? Go. Running, jogging. Paper, scissors, scissors, paper, paper. Dancing, uh, salsa. Yes! Ooh, I'm smart. Drums? Deodorant, musty, onions, low stank. <laughs> Funky, sweaty. Where you going? <laughs> Leaving? On the ground, stairs, floor. Me? Drinking? Starbucks? You want some? Traffic? Okay, everybody calm down. <laughs> it was tight. Y'all tight. Okay, you know what? Since all of you did so well, Starbucks and I want to help you all celebrate your own me moment this winter. So we're sending you all home with a $100 Starbucks gift card, baby. for our first guest. She's a very talented actress and producer who's starring in the new season of Truth Be Told. Please welcome the very beautiful Gabrielle Union. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm so happy to have you here. You look beautiful. No, hard saying. This is, I, and we've known each other kind of more like in passing yes. for what feels like 100 years. But I feel like I know you. You know what I mean? Well, well we I all feel like we know her, right? Yeah. Right, like you've been a part of our lives for so long. You know what I mean? It's amazing. Tell me about your vacation for 2023. 
Who? So ever since my husband retired from the NBA, because mm -hmm. we never got Christmas, he always played on Christmas. Wow. He wanted just he wanted to go away to a place and just be able to like cocoon as a family. So we started going to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So then it grew. It went from our family to we invited more families, and this year we are up to four families. Four families? Yes. Yes. That sounds so fun. It is. It is. Except what? My child is obsessed with being married. What do you mean? <laughs> we have no idea where that came from, but she's like obsessed. Is she? Obsessed. Like what does she do? Well, her best friend, Crosby, <laughs> he's became the target of this, of like- Did she marry her best friend? Well, he didn't know, he's not aware. <laughs> so we were like, Cobb, does, does Crosby know that you guys are married? <laughs> and she was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, you don't, you don't think you need to tell him or ask him, perhaps? And she was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, well, you're probably gonna be very successful uh, as a married couple. But what it was, it that was so, so one-sided yes. that it made it awkward. We, and we're, we're out there two weeks. Uh -huh. And poor little Crosby was like fighting for his life. It was very, <laughs> it was giving very Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> My, my child was the skunk, like she was Pepe. <laughs> and Crosby's like, get her out. <laughs> she was so, like it was, it, it was really serious. So Christmas day, we're having dinner, like there's what, 18, 20 of us having dinner and everyone's going around, they're talking about like what they're grateful for, this and the other. And she loves a, a public speaking moment. Oh, she speaks too. Girl. She, uh, a whole woman. She was, we're like, Cobb, would you <laughs> like to say something? And she was like, yes. <laughs> Whether, we are in Africa, Paris, uh -huh. or Hawaii. She's talking only to Crosby. Oh, so she talks to her husband. To her, her, husband. Husband. her husband. She's like, we're married. And then looks at the other girls. <laughs> and, and Crosby's like, I just wanted to play Spider-Man. Just like, play Spider-Man. Yeah. And so. she's an entertainer, too. Oh we got a good little clip of her singing. Yes, So does she get it from you or Dwayne? Neither of us can sing. That's her own thing. Yes. So precious. That is her own thing. And she sings all the hits. Doesn't matter genre. She, yeah. she will give you a country tune. She will give you bluegrass. Oh. She will give you hip hop. Like her, her auntie, um, we call her Queen Latifah. Yes. Uh, her auntie Dana uh, introduced her to Akon and Smack That. So that was fun too. She sings um, Smack That. Oh yes. <laughs> Yes, it's a very good time. I was like, what was that? What are you singing? <laughs> and how old is she? It went from Coco Melon to Smack That. Uh, she's, she just turned four in November. And you just celebrated a 50th birthday 50 a few girl. months ago. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a big birthday. Did you do anything big? We, I decided I wanted to be, I wanted to bring in 50 in Africa mm. and, and try to hit as many countries as I can and bring as many people along um, for this educational trip, for this connection to home, yeah. like our real home, and um, yeah, to just celebrate. And so they surprised me with Lisa Lisa. What? Like, like brought her all the way to Africa. You, you don't understand. Like we've been trying to get Lisa Lisa to do any of our parties. Ah! Um, oh my God. Forever, like, like we couldn't get her in Cleveland, but she came to, to Tanzania. And um, <laughs> yeah. yes, and I just, I cried through her whole set. Like, That's she amazing. means everything to me, yeah. That is beautiful, an amazing way to celebrate. Yeah. I have to ask, though, did you see any animals when you were in Africa? Oh, did we? Did you do a safari? Uh, we, yes, we did safari, and we went on safari in Namibia, and we saw, yo, yes, there we are. Um, so we saw, we, like, it, seeing lions is very rare, right? Yeah. We saw this whole pride of lions, and our guide was talking about when lions mate. Right. First of all, the Lion King doesn't cover this part because then it gets <laughs> gets a little messy. So, uh, but Mufasa basically had a bunch of wives. Basically, um, <laughs> long story short. But um, they were like, when they made it to see it, it's very rare. Well, we were in luck, and so you see this lion get up and kind of walk behind one of the the lionesses and kind of crouch down, and we're just like, oh, it looks like he's telling her a secret. 
And it wasn't a secret. And um, <laughs> the whole, like, everyone is like, oh, yes, we're watching it happen. And he was a three pump king, but um, <laughs> my child was like, he's hurting her. And I'm like, I hope not. Uh, but yeah, we had to we had to have the conversation. You did? Well, because I, I don't. We can't say he's hurting her. She's gonna watch, you know, National Geographic and be like, yeah. violence everywhere. <laughs> um, we're like, mm, you know. I love you, Maury Gabrielle. We'll be right back. The superintendent shut me down from asking questions at school or even acknowledging anything's wrong. All the memorials around town, they're all for Emily. It's like Dre didn't even exist. I need to act. You are. With those bright young minds you mold. But what use are their minds if I can't keep their bodies safe? I've tried so long to protect my students, but it wasn't enough. Woo! We're back with Gabrielle Union. Talk to me about Truth Be Told. Tell us about it. Yes, I'm joining season three. I get to work with one of my dearest friends, Octavia Spencer. Mm, and, um... Yeah. yeah, she's... Literally the best. Um, and this season, we are tackling uh, sex trafficking, mm -hmm. sexual violence, racism, um, the disparity in coverage when people of color, specifically black girls and women, go missing. Yes. Um, and this season, we are shining a light on all of that. Wow, that's a heavy story. Yeah, yeah. Why was it so, I mean, to me that's obvious of why it was so important to you, but can you tell us why it was so important to you? Yeah, um, as a survivor of sexual assault, mm -hmm. um, and especially the show takes place in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and that is where my, I experienced sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the show, it was just resonating and, and resonating and was hitting me deeper and deeper with, um, when I read the script. and. I thought, God, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm ready to do this so close to finishing the inspection, which was another really heavy, very, you know, deep, dark subject matter. I really just wanted to do comedies, but right. I thought I can lend my personal experience right. um, to the conversation. And hopefully being able to talk about it openly and honestly um, can hopefully at least save one child. If it can save one child, this is all right. I'm sure it will. It has to. So, we both love Janet Jackson. Can you tell the story when you first met her? Because I remember when I first met her. I want to hear your oh, story. Oh, gosh. When I first met Janet, um, it was in Miami. Uh -huh. And it was at this... <laughs> Jan. Jan. <laughs> um, it was at this, at this spot called Club Bed. And I was there, um, you, know, you know, back in the day, and maybe probably now, they would kind of, like, rate you, kind of rank you, sort of how popular you are, and that was kind of determined the kind of table or at that, that place bed you had. So my bed was all the way in the back. So I was very low uh, next to the toilet. Um, and, uh, and it was like me and Wilmer Valderrama, and we were hanging out there with our, you know, little, little, little bitty, you know, little bitty fame, little bit little money. So I was like, ooh, not that bottle, bring, yes, no, that econo, econo <laughs> bottle right there. But in the front was where all, like, the big, you know, the, the big stars were. And um, one of Wilmer's friends came back and was like, JD said, now is the time you're going to meet Janet Jackson. And at the time, she's dating Jermaine Dupri, we call JD. And I was like, no, this isn't what I, this isn't what I wanted to have on. This is my, I'm sweaty, I look crazy. And I'm like, oh my, and I'm panicking. And, I'm like, oh, and they're literally dragging me to her, her bed thing. And I get there, I get on the bed, and I am just like on the verge of tears, like a, like, but not a cute cry, like snot, like bad. And she sees me and she pops up, like Janet Jackson's getting up for me, like, what? oh, I'm like, oh, she thinks I'm somebody else. Well, she's gonna get up and she's only gonna be like, Ashanti, like, um, so when she gets up, she said, I, she grabs my hands, she goes, I'm so proud of you. When I tell you, like, the, the snot, like, it's not. I was so emotional. She's everything to me. And I was just like, I love you so much. And I just get it. Like, it, was, it did not go the way I had hoped. But luckily, she was, she was very kind. And I'm sure that I'm not the first person that, like, snotted in her presence <laughs> out of sheer exuberance of meeting the queen. Um, the but queen. I, I love her. And now we're friends. And, you know. That's amazing. Boy, get, boy, Wait, how did you, I heard you met Janet uh, through Jamie. Yes, it was, I think my first time meeting Janet Jackson was um, they threw me an Oscar party. For, for, and then this here, right here, yes. 
This time, my son is the biggest Michael Jackson fan there is, and obviously Michael has passed, and she was in concert. She said this was her last concert, so I made it my business, and at this time, girl, he had a date. And he took his date, and we drove all the way to, like, Indiana so he could see Janet Jackson in concert, and that's where this picture is from. Because I'm like, you gotta see the Jacksons, and Janet is on tour, so I needed to take my son to go see her. So that's that moment right there. Right. Yes. We're back with Gabrielle Union. I thought it would be fun for us to have our own girlfriend moment. I love these moments. I got some questions here that we can answer. You ready? Yeah. All right. Who threw the best house party you've ever been to? Oh, Prince. It's not even close. Prince? Prince, yeah. Oh, you got any Prince stories? Oh, there's a lot of stories, but first rule of Fight Club, you don't talk about Fight Club. But yes, it, um, because he, he would invite you, but somehow he would get your number, yes. and after, like, an awards thing, like, after you, you know, you won the Oscar, um, you have to hope you get a text on your phone. But you, mm. no one knows how he got your number. Yes. But you would get the text, and you had to hope that whoever else you were with also got the text. And there were times not everybody got the text. And <laughs> we were like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and so you have to try to ditch your friend because you're not going right. to miss a prince party because someone didn't get a text. And then how do you um, tell them they're not going? Well, we, well, we just say, we got the text. And then they know. <laughs> tell us about a time a celebrity friend invited you to something unexpected. So I filmed in, uh, in Atlanta for years and years and years doing Being Mary Jane, a bunch of movies that were in Atlanta. <laughs> And a lot of shows were moving down there. So one night it was me, Queen Latifah, uh, uh, my hairstyle, Larry Sims, and a bunch of folks. And they were like, Thank it was me. getting late. And you know, like the party's not happening, but like you kind of want the night to still continue. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what, what's next, what's next? And then somebody gets a text from Missy Elliott. And she was like, I'm rehearsing if you guys want to come roll through. But it's like 2 a.m. I was like rehearsing, but it's I need to see. And it was random, 2 a.m. at the time of my life. Tag. Yeah. Next time, uh, Missy, call your girl. Okay. Ooh, ooh, this is my favorite. I need to know. Can you show us your best courtside trash talk? There was this game, and there was this player who shall remain nameless, but you know, figure it out. Um, who was like kind of going at you know Conan D's neck, and so I said while he was about to shoot free throws. You've got birthing hips. <laughs> and the slow, like, where, like, what? he turned, the, the player turned, the rest of the guys turned, <laughs> the refs were like, and then you see him kind of like look down. I, I mean, and, and then he was out of the league. <laughs> I don't want to say it had something to do with me saying that he had birthing hips, which I guess for a man is hard to take. <laughs> um, but he could pop out a kid like that. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and he missed the free throw. So. Listen, you're amazing. <laughs> I did not expect you to say that. That was funny. Thank you so much for being here. You're amazing. <laughs> Will you come back again? Yes, yes. Bring Dwayne. Yes, yes. Love you guys yes. so much. Season three of Truth Be Told is streaming now on Apple TV Plus. We'll be right back. <laughs> Our next guest is a comedian, writer, actress, starring in a new Netflix movie called You People. Take a look. Have you talked to her family yet? Uh, no. Do you plan to? Yeah, I just haven't had the chance to meet them. So you're telling me you're about to ask their only adult daughter to marry you with this baby-ass ring, and you haven't even met her parents? Bro, white dudes really do be out here living by their own code. You got to make up a story or something for this, bro. Yeah, it is a small ring. You think her family will judge me and stuff? I'm judging you. This is terrible. Please welcome Sam Jones. You look gorgeous, first oh of all. God, thank you so much. So happy to have you here. Tell me, where are you from? Boston. Boston? Yes, I, I know. Boston. Black and from Boston. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and, and tell me about your beginning and your start. Like, you started in comedy? Yeah, so I started comedy at about 20. I tried it, uh -huh. and it didn't go great. And so I went, <laughs> and I did a bunch of other stuff. I was kind of searching. I was messing around with music. I was working a bunch of odd jobs. I worked at a Starbucks, worked at a Best Buy, trying oh. to find my way, kind of. 
And around 28, I was like, man, you really want to do comedy. Just like throw yourself out there. And I got back up and my first show back, I got booed really loudly um, and it hurt my feelings, mm -hmm. but I kept going. I didn't let That's that discourage me. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah, I didn't let yeah. it discourage me. And here we are today. And here we are today. So what was your big break? My big break, I did this big comedy festival in Montreal. Mm -hmm. It's called Just for Laughs. And they just bring like every comedian from all over the country, all the agents come. And I did this showcase and there were SNL people there and they dug me and they asked me to audition. So I went to New York, auditioned for Lauren Michaels. And he was like, you're good, but we think it would be better if you started out as a writer. So I was like, oh, I'm ugly, cool. You want to put me behind the camera? Not <laughs> ugly at all. <laughs> but I got the writing job and it was the best thing that ever could have happened to me. You doing it? Oh my God. And your first company album was dedicated to your mom. Tell us about that. Yeah, I named, called the album Donna's Daughter. Because uh, my mother's name is Donna. She passed away when I was 16. And it was my first like project that I was putting out. And I just felt like I had to dedicate it to everything that she gave me. Because without her and everything that she instilled in me, I wouldn't have been where I was. Right. And I just wanted to honor that. That is so beautiful. Okay, and you're in your first movie, You People. Yes. Tell us what that's about in your character. You People is about two people who come together from different faith backgrounds and different races, and they're trying to be together in a world that's trying to tell them a million reasons why it can't work. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people can share in that story of just when you really like someone, but everyone around you is kind of like, right. this isn't the person for you, and how that can tear two people apart or make them come in closer. And my character is Mo. I play Jonah's best friend. Mm -hmm. We have a podcast together. And I'm kind of the person who tells him straight and keeps it really real. Oh, keeps it real. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of keeping it real, can you relate to your character at all? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think that's what I am with all my friends. Like, mm -hmm. my homies are always calling, asking me for advice. They're always like, yo, I know you're gonna give it to me straight. So what do you think about this? But I'm also like a soft place to land, you know? Yeah. I bring that masculine energy and that feminine energy. So when you need a hug and you need to come to the bosom, I got you for that too. <laughs> <laughs> and in your first movie experience, you work with Eddie Murphy and I did too. So I'm curious to know, how was your experience working with Nerve wracking. It's, it's nerve -wracking, Eddie right? Murphy, yeah. I know. It's so scary the whole time. <laughs> And I felt like a nerd every time he would show up because I'd get all nervous and sweaty and look at the ground until he left. You know, like, I didn't want to make weird eye contact. I'm just like, oh, yeah, uh. <laughs> like a dork, because it's Eddie. You know, I grew up watching him since I was a kid. Right. I'm a big fan. I grew a tail like he had in Coming to America. You grew a tail? I grew a tail. I put beads on it. I thought it was crazy. I thought I was Prince Hakeem. It was like a whole thing. Did you tell him all of that? <laughs> no. You didn't tell him? No, I was so scared to talk to him. Anytime he would speak to me, I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just look straight, you know? <laughs> I feel you there. Congratulations on your engagement. Yes. <laughs> when is the wedding? <sighs> we keep going back and forth about the wedding, you know? Like, I don't know. We've been dating for like 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, I met my fiance in college, you know? Uh -huh. So we've been dating off and off for 15 years, so I don't think we're in a rush to a wedding, but we're saying 2024. 2024? Yes, Martha's Vineyard, hopefully. That's beautiful. Yeah, I love the vineyard. Oh my God, it's, pretty. it's so gorgeous. Yeah. That's a good place to get married at. Yeah. Okay, and tell me, how did you come out to your family? How did I come out to my family? Um, one day, I showed up at a family reunion with a short haircut and a girlfriend. <laughs> And you said what you said. And I was like, hey. Congratulations to you <laughs> and your fiance. Thank you. Keep Thank up you all so the amazing work. Will you come back? Of course I will. Right, you'll have me back. You I would love to be I back. I sure will. All right. Give a hand, y'all. You can catch you people on Netflix now. We'll be right back. A couple of weeks ago, I met an audience member who really, really loves onions. Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got another one for y'all. You're about to bite into this juicy hamburger, but it is smothered in onions. Are you still biting it? Okay, ma'am, can you please stand up, Miss Onion Lover? I'm Treasure. Treasure. I'm Hi. from Los Angeles. Okay. Born and raised. Mm -hmm. I eat onions by themselves. I wake up in the middle of the night. I will grill a whole onion. I will what? eat it. I eat onions on french fries, hamburgers, tacos. Anything you can put an onion on or you can't put an onion on, I'm the onion girl. Love onions, <laughs> got good breath. <laughs> I love onions, I do. I wake up in the middle of the night, I dream of onion. I wake up, go in the kitchen, 
chop it up, put it in a skillet with a little olive oil, maybe some butter, and sit there and eat the whole plate. I'm your onion girl. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Treasure, I see you! Come on down! Do you see her? <laughs> she is really in shock, y'all. Oh my gosh. Take your time, Treasure. <laughs> what are you thinking right now? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, so you didn't know none, like you had no clue. No, I had no clue. I was told something else. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the look on her face, Puzzle. She like, Jennifer, are you serious? We're very serious. Welcome to the Jennifer Hudson Show. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. And thank you. I heard you watch the show, like, every day. Oh, girl. You do? Girl, girl. I watch the show every morning, and uh, you know what? Y'all know I don't have a job, right? I watch it every morning and every evening. Oh. I do have a job, but I'm just saying. Yes. I watch you. I don't do the job. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good comeback. I got that. <laughs> So we met, I met you in the audience, and, and, but you wrote into the show. What made you want to write into the show? Because I love you. Thank you. Because I think you're awesome. Thank I've been so watching much. you since you were on American Idol. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm always looking at you on your show. Yes. I think you do such a fantastic job. Thank you so much. I think you're awesome. Thank you. You have grown Thank you. into such a beautiful person. Thank you. I mean, you know, I have a Virgo daughter, too. You do? When is her birthday? Her birthday is September 2nd. Oh, my God. Born on my husband's birthday. Wow. So that's his gift every year. <laughs> that's that. Yes, ma'am. And I... Uh, oh, my God. You are like... If she just even... She's graduating high school uh, next year, but if she even just have a fraction of that Virgo-ness that you have in you, Thank you, I know I have a winner. That means so I much. I know I have a winner. You are just fantastic. Thank you. I have to say, I feel like anytime I hear messages from other people's mothers, it feels like it's a message from my mother coming through mothers. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank oh my you. God, you guys. Okay. Now, I also heard that you go out of your pockets to help others. I love that about you. Oh my goodness. Tell yeah. me about that. I do. So I, um, I work with different nonprofit organizations in my community. Beautiful. And uh, one that, I, that I'm on the board with now is Keys to the Street. And what we do is every day of the week, since right before the pandemic, mm -hmm. we go out into the community, we gather food, and we feed those who are needed. We do it Monday through Friday if we can. Uh, we do over 250 bags um, sometimes a day. Wow. We do our senior citizens. We do our, you know, the people that's on the street, families, anybody that need food. If we can get clothes, we give them clothes. Yes. That is beautiful. And you're, you're not only volunteering, but you also have your own organization. I do. So I have an organization called Powers. It's been around for 30 years. Powers stand for you guys, Positive Outstanding Women, Entrepreneurs, Righteous Sisters. Come on. <laughs> And, and what we have done uh, is that we mentor young girls from the age of 12 all the way through high school and then into college. Mm. Uh, I'm a, I am a certified financial coach, okay. come from the banking industry for over 25 years. So I work with young girls on how to save their money, how to grow their money. And then I also show them that, you know, when you go to college, don't get the credit cards. Don't, you know, there's a lot of things that they should not be doing. So I try to prepare them. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.